so now let me give you a quick tour of this area and tell you kind of a little bit what plants I have in here and what's going to be going and what's going to be staying. So in this bed over here, uh, this is where the juniper was. I had a couple ferns. We had a couple nights of frost, one after the other. And for us, when it says 30, that means it's going to be hard frost. And it probably was a pretty hard frost because a lot of our plants got damaged. And that's why I'm not planting any warm weather plants right now. It is May 20th, I believe. And for us, we can start planting typically after Memorial Day, but sometimes we still get frost after that date. So right now I have a bunch of salvia, perennial salvia, that I'm not sure is perennial in our, air, in our area, that I am going to be planting around the apiary, all around it on the outside. So I planted tons of plants and they're going to be going around that area. I have landscaping fabric that I put a couple years ago in that space because I wanted to stop the grass from growing in there and kind of prepare it for this project that I had. Originally I was thinking of growing some lavender in there but that area is pretty wet so the lavender is going to suffer and this is why I'm going with salvia because it can tolerate a little bit more moisture than lavender. So just imagine that whole area is going to be lined with blue salvia. It's going to be to look absolutely phenomenal and uh, also I'm going to eventually have on each corner an evergreen holly which is going to be the little tiny holly it's going to kind of have a rounded form I don't have to prune it it naturally grows in that rounded mound it's going to provide that evergreen interest on each of the corners and also right around the door of the apiary garden over there which I'm thinking of actually calling it the potager garden because I have edibles and uh, flowering plants in there uh, so it just kind of makes sense to call it that way. I call it the apiary garden because we have the bees over there and this is what my husband calls the that area, the apiary. So that's why I called it that. I'm thinking of changing the name to the potager garden because it makes a lot more sense. Back to the ferns. So these ferns I actually dug up from under the deck over there because we get tons of natural ferns that grow over here. I think these are probably called the Boston fern, but now that we don't have the juniper over here, these are getting a lot of sunlight and these prefer to be in the shade. And because there was no tree to protect them, the frost damaged them pretty severely. You can see the damage on them, but I can cut all that back and they are going to grow again. And I'm going to be transplanting them and putting them in a an area where they receive some shade and I can kind of water them as well. The hostas also got damaged pretty badly in here. Oh, I'm stepping actually on one of them. So this is a blue hosta that I got last year. The other one, I'm not seeing it. I think the mole dug it. You can see all the damage from the hard frost. It's going to sprout again and um, make some more, some new leaves. And I'm not sure if this is the gourd hosta. I didn't see the tag on it. I didn't say its name. And this one right here, I have a clover <laughs> growing right through it. This is the ghost hosta. It has beautiful white foliage when it first starts. And then as it grows, it starts turning into a green color, kind of a little bit more on the chartreuse uh, or kind of a little bit more like this or between the inner color of this leaf and the outer color in between these two colors. And this hostel was uh, near the lilacs over there, near the lilac behind the wygilla over there. You probably can't see it, but you can probably see a little bit of the blooms. So it was in that area. I dug it out and I planted it over here. And now I have to dig it again. I have two of them over here. I'm still waiting for the other hosta that I planted in here. Hopefully it's going to come up. Maybe it's a good thing it didn't come up yet because of the frost. Last year I also got some columbine uh, from Dollar Tree and uh, they were in a bag and I uh, they were just a bunch of roots so I plant them over here I planted them over here I don't know how tall these things grow but I have an area in the back in the new flower bed in the backyard uh, 
that is kind of I, I want it to look sort of a, like a woodland garden because we have a lot of trees in there and I don't want to take down all the trees that are there I want to keep a lot of them in there I'm only going to take the invasive stuff out and some of the trees that are super thin and just don't make sense where they are and all these, the ferns and the hostas and the columbines are going to be transplanted into that area and most of this is going to turn into grass uh, probably I should include this kind of uh, with the bed that's going to be in front of this pine over here because it's going to be really difficult to mow around this so if I keep this uh, as a flower bed it will make sense and maybe I could just sort of make a shape that makes uh, some sort of a sense maybe for now an oval of some sort or something just to keep this area under control and maybe a little bit behind this and then I could put over here a plant stand or a pot or of some sort uh, I don't know I'm not clear yet on what I will be putting in here I need to put something in here just to uh, make sure that the grass is not going to be growing all around this area and I don't want to have to edge around this That's it's going to be a pain and I really like to use these as kind of uh, stand for pots I think they make great stands for pots and they look really cute and this one with all the stuff that I have over it there on it is also will make a beautiful stand for a pot I don't have to have a flower bed around it but because it's big enough where if I just have a pot, a random pot in here, um, maybe a tall one, it will make sense. So if I just stand a little bit, if I back up a little bit, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So we have this area over here that's going to be a flower bed and that's going to be just a tall pot that's going to be stand up on its own. And then we have a we're going to have a tree, a flowering tree over there and the juniper in the back and now let's go to this bed over here I started this bed when I was pregnant with my little one so that was oof, four, no, three years ago because I was pretty pregnant with her yeah, a little over three years ago so I started it uh, on this side I didn't have any cardboard I dug all the grass on this side and on this side I decided to start putting cardboard because I was getting exhausted and I had less battle with all the weeds on this side. Now I do have to weed this area because the weeds are starting to creep in. But over here I lined this whole ring with hostas. I lost one of them and this one is off center a little bit. They're starting to put on some growth. And I wanted to continue this whole ring around and I do have plenty of hostas over there and over here that I'm going to be digging up and planting in this bed over here to complete the circle and then these uh, are lily of the valley and I know they are invasive but we have them over here I planted them because I really love them because look I mean you can't you can't pass that I love the bloom structure on Lily of the Val on Lily of the Valley. It's just so beautiful, so dainty, and I love how it hangs. I love the color, and I also love the leaf structure. And if they receive enough moisture, the leaves actually stay pretty green, so they will make a beautiful ground cover in this area. You can see they're starting to spread over here. So I also want to take some from right next to the rock. I tried to smother them over there, but they just grew thickly. And I'll take you there in a little bit and show you. And uh, I took them and I planted them around here. So I have to complete this circle also with that. And in front of the hosta, my plan is to plant uh, originally the Dolce Hukura to have a ring all around so we would have the hostas in here then we would have the dolce hookera in here and then we would have the lily of the valley which is going to slowly creep in into the bed and that's going to be circling all around this area i wanted to plant a hydrangea in this section over here 
but I haven't gotten to that yet. I want something that's going to stay small and it's probably going to bloom blue, which is what I want because this is an evergreen tree and the soil over here is probably on the acidic side. We can test it and see if that's <laughs> the case before we plant the um, hydrangea in here. So on this side over here, uh, you can tell I didn't actually clean this bed yet. I still have the bloom stalks from last year. This is a plant that I found growing near the shed and I dug it up. It was actually near the chicken coop. I dug it up and I planted it in here. The first year it struggled a lot, but the second year it did really well. But I really love the the foliage on it it has beautiful structure and i love the dainty blooms on it it's kind of like an umbrella shape and the color even though i'm not a big fan of yellow this yellow over here doesn't bother me at all and it's not like a thick cluster of these blooms it, they're very dainty you could see the foliage through them and i love how it kind of dances in the breeze with the wind it's very beautiful and I didn't fertilize anything in here yet. I have to do that because this giant old tree is sucking all the nutrients out. You can see here, the I planted this last year. This is a white bleeding heart and I love, love the blooms on this. They're so beautiful, but I'm thinking I either, I'm going to fertilize it this year, see what's going to happen. I have to put irrigation in here also. And if this bleeding heart still doesn't do that well after I fertilize it and I put irrigation in here, then I'll have to transplant it into the woodland garden because they do love the shade and they like moisture. And I think this tree is sucking a lot of the moisture and a lot of the nutrients away from this bleeding heart. And in front of the bleeding heart, I also have some ferns in here. I was debating whether to kind of continue this formal look of just continuing the pattern of having ferns all around in here. But the problem when it comes to this area, let me step back. So this side over here gets afternoon sun and that side gets afternoon shade. So I cannot plant it all the same. The hostas and the lily of the valleys will be okay and hydrangea will be fine. But if I plant another hydrangea over there, it's not going to do well because it will be super shady. And if I plant uh, a, uh, the ferns over here, they might suffer as well because they're going to receive a lot of sunlight in here. I can't plant a different type of ferns on this side over here. So in our woods, we have another type of fern uh, that can tolerate more sun than this. And I actually have one growing right up against the raised beds in our vegetable garden. And I can dig one of them up and plant it in here. The other one I want to put in front of the shed and see how it does. It is a pretty aggressive fern. It spreads pretty, pretty rapidly, but I can control it and have it go where I want it to go and because it is sunny uh, because this area is more sunny and it receives afternoon sun it probably won't be as aggressive in here and it could be wrong if I am wrong then I'll try to dig them up and see uh, maybe I can put them in a different location where I just want ferns to kind of take over so that's what's eventually going to happen here I don't know when I'll get to this finishing this project because I do have a lot of projects going on this year. I have the vegetable garden, the apiary garden, the garden between us and the neighbors and between our houses and the garden that's lining the driveway and the backyard, the flower bed and I want to also set up a pool for the kids and finish up the patio. It's a lot and I have lots of things going on in life <laughs> as well. You know, just so life is busy and so I don't know if I'm going to be able to tackle this this year. Now let's go over to this area. This is kind of hideous over here, but I just want to show you the damage that the, that the frost did on this azalea over here. And I have one azalea in the back of the house that I actually don't like because it has red, like orangish red blooms. 
but you can see the frost took some of the leaves out and I don't know if the blooms are still okay. The other one in the back of the house is damaged. These pots, I was bringing them inside during that time when we were having frost, so they're okay. And now this hosta, because it doesn't have any protection on it, it a lot of its leaves got damaged. I mean, look at this, it's all limpy. Uh, but it will hopefully bounce back. And uh, this is one of the hostas I'm going to be transplanting and putting in that area over there. I also, in this bed, there are the daylilies over here. These are yellow daylilies. I don't know their name, but they're very beautiful and I wanna divide them and put them somewhere else. This whole bed is going to be changing. I don't know when, but it will happen one of those years. <laughs> And this one also, I mentioned before, is going to be changing completely. So this hosta is going to be dug up. And hopefully this year I can remove the gravel out of here and put down cardboard and mulch. I did broadcast over here in the winter some amaranth seeds. And I think they might be starting. I'm not sure if that's them. It's hard to tell right now. But it looks like... I don't know, is that it? I'm not sure. I need to let them grow a little bit to see if that's them. Uh, there's a lot of weeding that has to happen in here. And then once they sprout, then I can maybe put a little bit of mulch in here. These are, I believe, Siberian irises. They seeded themselves from that clump into here. And I actually like them here. They're very beautiful. And they look kind of cute up against the stairs. Um, but uh, they're not going to be staying here. And I love the bloom color on them. They're very beautiful and they are a late spring bloomer. So there's another clump of them right over here. And I also am battling Bermuda grass in here. So I did come and spray and I sprayed everywhere over here. And uh, looks like everything is dead. So now I can come back and weed whack this area. Typically, I just weed whack it, but this year I just didn't want to battle <laughs> any of that stuff. And because I've been battling the Bermuda grass in here for years, I decided to just spray it because it was getting more and more aggressive. And I know it's controversial, about spraying is controversial, but to each their own and you do what you can. Um, we have a large property, it's two acres, and I manage everything here by myself in all the garden beds and the planting and um, so I need a little bit of help and the spray is a little bit of help. <laughs> and we have these wygillas over here that were also in here when we moved in and this one is a dark blooming wygilla. has these beautiful dark blooms, dark pink blooms and uh, it has these green leaves with a little bit of a reddish tint to them and on this side over here this is more on the darkish side you can see it's like a brandy wine kind of color it's uh i don't know i forgot the name of the wygilla i think it's is it brandy wine wygilla i think so but uh, i don't know if that's it but this one blooms a light pink bloom and over here there was a yellow landscaping rose that I dug up and you can see I mean look how ugly this is um, and it looks like it's coming back again it must have been a root that was left in here and now it's sprouting again so I'm going to try to dig this up again because the one that I dug up I planted in front of the shed and that one did really well and I also bought a I think oh so easy lemon squeezy it's a funny name uh, landscape rose from Proven Winners and that one ended up dying because it was in a more shady location and roses like a lot of sunlight and uh, because uh, because it was in a shady location it was super tiny when I received it it barely had any roots on it I bought it from Home Depot actually it was a pr proven winner variety but when it was sent to me it barely had any roots on it and I think that's sort of what killed it and on this side over here I still didn't get to the lavender I will I will I need to get I need to get to it but I have to uh, prune all of them 
and you can see the damage from the winter last year I lost this half and uh, it looks like this year there's another part that's lost on this side we did have a minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or probably more because typically where our house is located we end up having a lot lower temperatures than what the weather forecast is so it probably went down to the uh, to below minus 20 or maybe even minus 30. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case and some of the lavender did die but some of it looks like it's still doing okay and this lavender again some of it did die from last year also because I had an injured foot so I wasn't able to come here and take care of it and water it and so I had this whole area sort of lined up with lavender and I have some left still over here. I'm going to be digging them up and planting them at the bottom. So we have here at the bottom, I have some daffodils that are already done blooming and also I had two different mixes of tulips. I had some early, some mid bloomers and some late bloomers the late bloomers are these i don't know the name of the varieties honestly because i bought them from home depot or no i bought them from walmart so i really don't know the name of the varieties but they're so beautiful i love the color and i love how i love that they are double blooms they look sort of like roses and peonies and i my favorite is my favorite is actually the white and these two colors came together in a mix. I mean, look at this, it's so beautiful. It's like a double rose. And it looks like I still have one that's about to bloom in here. So these are actually kind of on the magenta color, similar to that color over there. So we have, these are the creeping phlox and it looks like the purple one is super aggressive. And I really love that and I was thinking to actually remove these pink phlox from here because they did have some damage in the middle uh, but they are filling in again look at them they're doing really beautifully um, but I was thinking if I step back over here it would look a lot more beautiful if I just have a river of the blue creeping phlox and then the pink ones I can put them somewhere else. I do want to keep the Black Eyed Susans in here. I lost, I think, a couple of them or three of them. I have a few that I can just dig and transplant into here. I think two of them. So one here and one over here. So I can dig some that I have around the garden. And these just seed themselves everywhere. So uh, I don't mind. I love them. <laughs> some of them end up being perennials and some end up being annuals so we have that over here and that's a summer plumer and right in front of that i have the firecracker sedum and these are a low growing sedum and they bloom a dark pink bloom i think or a light pink bloom i forgot but i what i love about them is not the blooms is actually the foliage look at this foliage and I love the texture. It has this succulent texture to it. And I think this foliage with the green of the Black Eyed Susan and the yellow of the Black Eyed Susan's flowers is going to look very beautiful. Now, this one in the middle, the reason why it's small is because I actually broke one of these off when we got them because I only found two when I got them. So I broke one of the plants off and I divided it uh, I took a division I guess <laughs> that's the proper way to say it and I planted it in here it had a little bit of fruit on it and now it's starting to put on some more growth I did fertilize them when I first planted them with a little bit of plant tone not too much but just a little bit because this whole area is just sand and rocks that's all it is when we bought this house uh, this whole area had rocks in here and there were hostas planted in here and every summer they would get fried so I ended up transplanting these hostas to under that cedar over there 
and the other variety of tulips you probably saw in other videos i don't know its name but it blooms this beautiful peachy pink color and it filled up this whole area my idea in the beginning was to kind of create a river that goes from there and it just keeps going like that and it expands and it goes up and expands and filled up fills up this whole area and maybe i will end up doing that <laughs> maybe i will plant end up planting just kind of randomly in bunches in clumps some tulips over here over there kind of scatter them around and i'm not sure <laughs> let's get back to this side over here so in here i had an idea of planting this creeping thyme and i was thinking it's kind of going to cascade and create this beautiful uh, looking perennial that's easy to care for but that was not the case i do love the blooms on the creeping thyme i think it's very cute <laughs> it's kind of has this ethereal look to it but i think it would do better in a more dry location that's not close to the house because this, these are the steps and you can see they're pretty damaged over here to our front door so i can care for this pretty easily it's not difficult to care for and the creeping time over here just makes it look super dry and kind of ugly i don't like it in here so i'm going to be removing it from here and planting it somewhere else probably all the way in the front have it uh, if you have seen that video where i planted in the front of our driveway i cleared up a hill and i planted in there i think that the creeping time will do good over there and you can see the daylilies <laughs> not the daylilies sorry the uh, lily of the valleys they are just so vigorous and they're taking over this whole space so i need to divide them and i need to take a whole bunch of them out of here uh, i mean look at them they're very beautiful though i love them and i was thinking maybe i should just work with them and let them do their thing they're filling in this whole area again now in here i had some oriental lilies and i had some some of them were the orange lilies some stargazer lilies tiger lilies i purchased the stargazer lilies because that's my favorite but they sent me a mix which is okay and i couldn't tell until the year when they started blooming until two years after they after i planted them and so some of them are still sprouting in here even though i thought i dug them all up but I'll have to dig these up also and plant them somewhere else because I don't want them in here. And this is another thing that I battle in this bed is this. I'm not sure what it's called, but it just creeps everywhere and it's so hard to pull. It has a really deep root system. Uh, so I'm thinking I just need to individually kind of spray it to control it in here. And in here I also have the bearded iris. These are a pink blooming bearded iris. I don't know, they came with the house. They were actually planted right here up against this edge right here. And I dug them up and I planted some in this bed and some in the bed under the deck. And I'm thinking of maybe making this clump a little bit thicker going that way. I don't know. I'm not sure yet what will happen in here. But I do have a landscape rose over there and i for totally forgot its name i will try to see what it is maybe watch some of the older videos and see what that rose is but that's also another rose that i bought from home depot online and it was sent to me with a really tiny root on barely any roots and it's been struggling for years it's been what this is like its fifth year or fourth year and it's barely putting on any growth so i think i'm going to have to replace it and anyways what i want to plant in here is some beautiful david austin roses or heirloom roses that have a beautiful fragrance to them and are sort of double and i kind of want some on the peachy side some on the pink side i don't want them all necessarily to match i'm a 
might want to plant one that's white i don't know i want several roses in this bed over here also i'm going to be expanding this whole bed and make it more rounded because you can kind of see the shape of the bed has changed over time and i and when i'm looking at it from the window of our house when i'm standing over there it just does not look nice at all so I do want to expand it and in, the pre in one of my pre previous videos I mentioned I'm going to be planting a dwarf peach tree in there kind of where my finger is and it's going to give us some height and some pink blooms and kind of a cascade a little bit over the walkway over here. I think that's going to be to look absolutely beautiful. Also, right in here I have some tall flocks and these are just the common tall flocks. I believe they are, they have different colors. Some of them are light pink, some are on the darker pink. So I have three clumps of them, one here, one there, and one over there. And right here I also have some Veronica. I believe these are pink blooming. Veronica and I divided one of them also and I planted it in there I think I need to bring it more to the front and there's another one right there or maybe I should just put them all close together and kind of create a clump of Veronica I don't know <laughs> I think they probably look better this way so if you can just imagine the lavender being in the front creating a beautiful hedge over here like that and this bed is going to be more rounded like this all the way to there and with the tree over there the nectarine tree i think that's going to look very beautiful now that area is going to change and going to be formal i want to put a hedge of boxwoods all around like that and then in the middle I'm going to be planting some peonies and some hydrangeas and some other stuff and I'm going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. When is that going to happen? I have no idea. <laughs> and these stairs over here I need to figure out how to fix them uh, because you can see there are giant gaping holes in here that are uh, pretty dangerous to walk on and a lot of weeds grow in them. I did spray, so all I have to do now is just come with the weed whacker and clean this up. I can fill these up with some gravel, but when the snow comes and when you are shoveling this, you end up removing a lot of the gravel. I think if we can just cover it maybe with a piece of plywood or something for now, and until we are able to fix this whole staircase, I think that would be uh, better. This juniper, I was thinking of kind of taking it down to over here maybe, or just keeping it or letting it grow up onto that edge over here where the boxwood hedge is going to stop. I don't know, I'm not sure. Or maybe if I just keep it up to kind of where you see this, uh, it, you can tell kind of where it should stop. Can you see it? It has like a divot right there. So I was thinking, this part i could plant something that's creeping uh, that can be some of them will be uh, summer blooming some of them uh, spring blooming i can also put some tulips in between maybe if i put tulips in between them and daffodils and then those will be summer blooming it is so fragrant oh and so beautiful. So back to this, uh, maybe if I plant some low growing plants that are summer blooming and fall blooming, and then the bulbs will be spring blooming. I think that would look nice in front of the hedge of boxwood. So just imagine that with me. It's not here yet, but one day it will be. <laughs> and just a quick update over here. I also, uh, ended up planting 17 Spartan junipers right here because I kind of wanted them to reach all the way up to the tree that we cut down to create a beautiful hedge and if you can see it right there I just started mulching in here also so I put down some cardboard and mulch and I'm going to be covering this whole area over here So 
So this whole area along with all this all the way kind of engulfing this apple tree over here and up to the lilac over there is going to be mulched and I'm going to be pulling down pulling away the gravel and putting it on this gravel driveway over here and uh, and I'm going to be planting probably next season because there are a lot of invasive things that I just kind of want to smother and if I just put down the mulch this season and plant next season I think we should be okay because there is poison ivy and bittersweet vines and all that stuff I do want to keep in mind to keep these ferns in here because these trees will eventually shade this area and I do like these ferns. We have some bigger ferns in the back and I think these in the front look like they're, some of them are the same type as in the back and some are the thicker leaves fern, ferns. I don't know their technical name. But you can see these are the ones that can tolerate the sun. And I think uh, I will be taking some of them and planting that under the cedar tree where it where it is on the sunny side. And also I'm going to be spraying all this gravel I've been paddling. So just imagine that when we first moved this whole area was covered with poison ivy and bittersweet vines and sumac and shrubs all this up to probably i think up to where my finger is all that all this so uh this is the pile that i got from cleaning up all this area over here so we did a lot of progress over the years and that lilac eventually will have to move out of here. I'm hoping to be able to plant it somewhere else. I might take divisions from it or I probably can't move the whole thing because it is a beast. And we want to turn that from where the tree is right in front of it, kind of like that, into the driveway like this. So all this and let me take you over here up to this rock right here. So kind of straight that way and this way is going to be the driveway. So there's a lot of cleaning up that has to happen, but it's a work in progress. And right now I am pretty happy with the progress that was done on this side. And I'm going to be doing some more progress on that side also this year and hopefully also on this side. This all was just weeds and grass and there were a few tulips that I dug out, out of here and I planted them under that tree. There were also some wild berry bushes that were growing in here. It was just pretty wild in here. And on this side there were two huge rhododendrons. So just imagine that huge, uh, no azaleas, sorry, two huge azaleas and this two huge white jilla shrubs over here so it was just I felt like it was suffocating kind of so this is why I dug all these up when we cut when we the second year we moved in and I've been trying to plant something in the back but I left the ones in the front because I really love the white jillas and I want to save them so I think I'm going to stop right here because it is starting to rain right now and I have to put my tools away and the weed whacker because uh, it is electric and I don't want the, the battery to get damaged. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope it made your day just a little bit brighter and encouraged you to go out there and get planting. And if you are interested in all the things that I'm going to be doing over here on our two acres, stick around, hit that subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications of when I upload new videos. And if you like this video, hit that like button so that more people can see it on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.